This video is brought to you by Raycon. Hey Arlo. Yeah, alternate universe Arlo. We're on the moon. Yeah, that's a big jump. No, we took a rocket here. No, I, I mean narratively. We were on a walk, then we had a sick day, and now we're on the moon. It's just like, where do we go from here? This this arc doesn't seem to have much of a structure. Okay, we're burning up time. Let's get to the... Oh, uh, good thing we brought our Raycon everyday earbuds. They're so sleek and low profile with a perfect comfy fit thanks to the assortment of silicone tips they came with and they never fall out. I can enjoy my music all day, which is particularly appreciated in the cold silence of space. They sure do help the space madness. I love how I can switch between three unique sound profiles to match whatever I'm listening to. Me too. I love being able to take calls at the time of a button. You know, when we're not 240,000 miles from Earth. I'd say the best of all is the fact that these Raycon everyday earbuds last up to eight hours on a charge and up to 32 hours using the charging case. I didn't even have to plug them in during the approximately three day journey here. Man, the fact that they're half the price of other premium audio brands and you can get 15% off by heading to buyraycon.com slash Arlo or by clicking the link in the description, nearly as awe-inspiring as the sea of tranquility. Yeah. It's a lot easier to breathe here than I expected. Yeah, the whole like, no air freezing thing, really exaggerated apparently. That's great. Oh gosh, that's disgusting. Oh no. Oh, that's gross. Oh. Come on. Oh, man, I, I know I know dusty Wii U is pretty much a cliche at this point, but I didn't I didn't I didn't put the dust on it for a joke. This is just oh. Oh, oh, jeez. Okay, let's just just put that down for now. Um I mean, ah! Oh, I'm so mad right now. Oh, I could just uh, never mind. I just, who's got the energy to be mad, you know? It's just it's just not in me. But you know what? I'm Frustrated because the Wii U and 3DS eShops are about to close. They might even be closed. By the time you watch this video, might already be done. Closed forever. Just forever. Completely dead. And naturally, at the time of this recording, everybody is scrambling to buy stuff. It is their absolute last chance ever. And on that note, you know, I have been racking my brain reading articles and stuff, like all of these 3DS and Wii U games to get, what is it I want? What's that thing that I want? The only thing I have been able to come to is Picross 3D Round 2. <laughs> That's it. I played Picross 3D on my DS. It probably could possibly be my number one most played game on my DS. And I never got around to playing Round 2. And you know what? You can't use a credit card anymore if I use eShop money, then I, I'm not using the same account anymore. I have a totally new account, so I don't know how I would transfer it from my leftover from 3DS to there. So I gotta get like the exact amount, the exact number of cards that I, I just haven't done it. I'm just, <laughs> I think I just gotta, just gotta say goodbye. Point is though, this is dumb. This is just, this is just dumb, you know? It's, it's just really disappointing. And I, you don't need me to tell you that. Everybody knows this is disappointing, but uh, I don't know. I thought I'd just, just take one last opportunity to just grump about it. To just, just, just be a little bit frustrated. To a degree, to at least some degree, we get it. We get why it's happening. We know they can't be up forever. Yeah, that whole thing. And you know, a lot of people who are more uh, on the tech savvy side of things have, have piped up and, and given us, you know, th there's, there's complex reasons why these systems have to come down, I'd say, particularly the 3DS. It takes a lot to run storefronts like this, just the infrastructure, and not just like the effort involved, but it takes a lot to do it safely because you know these are systems that are storing people's information and it's just it's a, it's a very big thing it's a, it's a security issue at least to a degree it is difficult to keep things running using these old outdated archaic systems and all that stuff. But of course, this is frustrating for, I, I would say, two main reasons. You know, okay, it can't go forever, but one, did this have to be the time <laughs> that it shut down? It just feels too soon, especially for the Wii U. It's not even that old. I guess it's not that much younger than 3DS, whatever. It's just too soon for both of them. One example, Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. That game, that game Nintendo did, did you know it's only four years old? Yeah, it came out in March 2019. Four years. Four years. And after these closures, there will be no 
official way to purchase that game. Imagine working on that game. Imagine being one of the people who worked on it. And after only four years, Nintendo doesn't sell it anymore. You can't buy it in stores. You can't buy it on the eShop. It's just, it's just not a thing anymore. Yeah, sure, you can hunt down a, you know, a used copy, but that doesn't give any money to Nintendo. That's not official. That is subject to, you know, price hikes and all that stuff. Nintendo themselves, no, they're done with it. Completely done with it. Trash can. A lot of other games too. Most of the latter 3DS games are just like, it's weird. Samus Returns. The big return of Metroid. It was the first new 2D Metroid. It was a remake, but you know what I mean? It's still like a new 2D Metroid project. The first one in so long. Not a thing anymore. Nintendo doesn't sell it. They're just done. <laughs> They're just done with it. Metroid Dread, Metroid Prime 4, Metroid Prime Remastered. Doesn't matter. This new era of Metroid, nah, we're leaving that one behind. So yeah, it's frustrating that it just feels too soon. Um, but then two, of course, another obvious one. It's the fact that Nintendo just giving, isn't giving us any other options. Sure, it may be hard to use this old archaic system, but like, could you consider putting a new system in place or something? And I get that takes work, that takes money, but still, this is a vast library of games. Two libraries of games. To just flush it all down the toilet is so ridiculous for so many reasons, even just from a business standpoint. Don't you want people to be able to buy these games? And it's extra frustrating that the Wii U is going along with the 3DS because the Wii U, that could have been the key. They have DS games on the Wii U. It can emulate DS games. So like, it, there's a very good chance that Nintendo will never have another dual screen system because it's just a thing. It's just, it's just, it's created a lot of problems. But the Wii U, oh man, like right there, that's it. You got the TV, you got the gamepad, there it is. I don't know if it's powerful enough to emulate a 3DS. It seems like it probably would be. But like, what if you just kept that open just for the DS and the 3DS emulation? Keep the libraries open just even just for that. They could have done something like that, but Nah, we got nothing. There are no plans, nothing from Nintendo other than it's shutting down, sorry, see you later. And it probably goes without saying that a frustrating thing about closing down a digital storefront is that digital storefronts are supposed to, they serve a great purpose. They solve a big problem. The idea of like, you wanna play a game, but the only way to play it is to like track down the old hardware and get an old copy. Like, it's just, it's very archaic at this point. It's its prohibitive when it comes to cost. It's getting more and more difficult to find those the old hardware and those old games. Digital storefronts are supposed to be a solution to that, you know? Like, like uh, I, I had that video, that Metroid video about like, if you wanna get into Metroid, where you can get all the old games. And we are now losing access to several games that are not, they were available. You were able to get all these great Metroid games. No, not anymore several Metroid titles are now being delisted. And now your only option is to, well, emulate obviously, or go track down an old copy of a game, which is just ridiculous. And the further we go away from now, away from this closure, these games are just gonna feel more and more lost to future generations. If Nintendo is smart, they will keep having, you know, regular, relatively gimmickless single screen consoles going forward. And the very idea of emulating something with two screens is just gonna be more and more ridiculous. And the funny thing is like, the more people care about a thing, uh, the more crazy and hurtful it feels when Nintendo just doesn't, just doesn't. <laughs> just doesn't even care one little bit. Not even like, just like a little PR jargon, you know, like Doug Bowser or something. Like we're, we're listening and, and we think that maybe sometime in the future, we'll, we'll try to come up with a way for you to play and buy these games. Nothing, <laughs> not a single thing. Whatever we're all saying, all this stuff, all these videos, all these wonderful love letters to the services, nothing. Don't mean nothing. And this definitely plays into that whole uh, Nintendo thing of being focused on new things. That, that, that statement that just boils my blood every time I hear it. You tell them you love that old thing. You tell them that you'd love to play that old thing. 
they don't care. <laughs> they don't care one single bit. They, they might give you a remake sometime down the line, but uh, for the most part, we, we hear it again and again, especially like Miyamoto, just like we're focused on new things as though giving us the old things and new things, those are mutually exclusive. It is, it is impossible to have both. See, see, and then people like me, I, we, we get into the into the psychology of it. We start, we start jumping at shadows. You know, Nintendo does not want this. They shouldn't let us, th but you know what? We get thinking, we get looking at this. I'm thinking, what are all the reasons they might want to do this? Uh, you know, so so there is indifference, um, but then we've also seen uh, what what seems to be, might not be, might just be ignorance, might just be indifference. But when it comes to Nintendo's overall. Uh, uh, their, their overall tendency to drag their feet when it comes to giving us old stuff, it starts to also feel like they just want to have more control than that. We don't want you to want the old things. We want you to want the new things. We don't want you to even know about the existence of, the, of those old things. Uh, you like the old thing more than the new thing? Doesn't matter. You're going to play the new thing and you're going to like it. It starts to feel like they, they just want complete control over our buying habits and our tastes, you know? And I know that's getting deep, but like I said, this is what happens when you make us think. I, I, I guess because indifference is one thing, but it's kind of like if you are indifferent uh, and everyone else feels very, very passionately about it, it doesn't feel like you're indifferent. It starts to feel like you're actually kind of uh, swinging hard the other way. You don't just not care, you clearly don't want this thing, you know? And you start to think, does Nintendo not want us to have the old stuff so that they can uh, more appropriately and in a more controlled way sell the remakes and stuff later? I'm getting way too deep. I'm rambling like absolute crazy. So I, sh I reel it in, reel it in a little bit. Point is, we care a lot. We care an awful lot and Nintendo does not. And that's frustrating. And then even just on top of like, you know, the games, I want to be able to buy the games. I want people to be able to buy the games and all that. Even beyond that, of course, there's the much broader, much more long-term game preservation argument. From a preservation standpoint, just shutting down these shops, just, just flushing them down the toilet, that is, it's a huge blow to game preservation. On that note, if you haven't seen it yet, Gerard the Completionist just did an incredible video where they bought every single Wii U and 3DS game and DLC and everything on both eShops. Really super good video. Please go check it out. And here's the thing here. I'm getting tired of looking at this thing. Hold on. Just, just cover that thing up. Just cover it. I don't want to see it anymore. It's too gross. Uh, anyway, here's the thing. You know what all this leads to? All this talk, all these closures, all this stuff. You know what it's going to boil down to? You know what I'm actually going to do to get Picross 3D round two? I am just going to have to pirate it. Let's just be honest, that's what's gonna happen. I want that game. I'm not gonna be able to buy that game officially. I could buy a secondhand copy, import it from Japan, but we never got a physical copy here. I'm just gonna have to pirate it if I wanna play it. Here's the thing though. Piracy, that's not even the word to use anymore. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a pirate. I don't really emulate. That's not really a thing that I've gotten into. But you know what? Like, this is the truth. It's not piracy anymore. If Nintendo is not selling this product, if there is no official way to buy it, I'm not pirating it. It's just emulation. I'm just gonna call it emulation at that, but I'm just gonna have to emulate it just the way it is like there's there should be no stigma attached to that you can't steal an item from a store that doesn't sell that item it's not possible it's just logically <laughs> impossible. It's an unstoppable object meets an immovable force. And when it comes down to it, when I download a ROM of that game and play it for free, that's just not something that should be frowned upon anymore. It's, it's just not. Nintendo loses nothing. And like, I cannot stress enough, I don't like to emulate. I don't, I just don't do that. I prefer to have the real games. I mostly just don't usually know how to do it. I'm <laughs> just not very smart. I'm scared of messing up my systems and all that stuff. But you know what? Word is on the grapevine that the 3DS is actually pretty easy to mod. And that is what anyone is gonna have to do if they want to play 3DS games or Wii U games or whatever. That's just the way it is. Buy it secondhand and give no money to Nintendo at all. Pay way too much money because the secondhand games market is just ridiculous. Just emulate it. Just emulate it. If that's the option Nintendo has given us, then we should not feel bad at all. 
to take that option. It's all we got. And you know what? It's nice that we at least have that. It, it, at least, you know, the people are maintaining this one little bit of power. Nintendo can't fully take away all these games. They lack that ability. And that's great because they don't deserve that ability. <laughs> Honestly, they do not deserve the ability to just delete these games from existence and make sure that no one can play them ever again. You might say, oh, but they're the platform holder. They published a lot of these games. They have all the right in the world. I mean, okay, from like a business standpoint, yeah, but that the business standpoint and the moral standpoint, the artistic standpoint, those don't always agree with each other. And I'm not going to always go with the business standpoint. I'm sorry. They're doing what they feel is in their best interest. We're going to do what we feel is in our best interest. And boy, you know what? Just all of this, it really makes you think how scary it is. The idea that we will someday, maybe not even that far away, be having this same discussion, this same kind of video about the Switch eShop. It won't be that long. I mean, like, you could argue that the Wii U eShop closed down pretty quick because, you know, the Wii U was a commercial failure. Not a lot of people have Wii U's. The 3DS did pretty darn well for itself though. Maybe it closed down sooner because it was using an old archaic system and they're ready to get that. Maybe this Switch eShop, maybe it'll last a lot longer. Maybe future Switch consoles will be more backwards compatible so these can go along with us. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe, that's a big fat maybe, isn't it? Like we can hope that Nintendo keeps making normal single screen games that are easy. And of course I will always say like I'm, I've been, I've, the, the older I get, the more anti-gimmick I get, you know, Nintendo with their little experiments, with their weird systems, two screens and all that stuff. It's cool, but it really messes stuff up down the line, makes it really hard to keep playing and preserve these games. And I don't like that. So we can hope, that things stay more or less normal-ish with their consoles going forward. And so we can see a better effort on their part to keep providing us with these games. That is of course, unless they, like I said, they, uh, they, they are anti providing these games because they want to have more control over what we're buying and all that stuff, blah, blah, blah. Point is Switch eShop, that might close 10 years from now. We might be having the same discussion and that's scary. It's scary and I don't like it. There it is. That is, th thank you for joining me for my video, being angry, grr. Ooh, one last time over the eShop closures. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna not finish cleaning this gamepad and instead put it back on the shelf for another five years. <laughs> See you later.